when workers were regularly out on strike. Stock markets were crashing and the far left in British politics were agitating for a revolution, including, it appears, one young journalist from Wigan, sitting not very far away. Times have now changed and these days Paul Mason has recanted his revolutionary Marxism in favour of radical social democracy. In a moment, we'll find out why and hear from Peter Taft, the General Secretary of the Socialist Party and former Chief of Militant, about why he thinks a revolution is still nigh. But first, let's go back to 1987 and hear the views of a couple of familiar faces. There undoubtedly was the demand for a forum where the left could come in from the cold. For many on the so-called outside left, the Labour conference was a disaster. But since then, spirits have been greatly lifted by the problems of the world's stock market. The world is never going to be the same again. There's no way back now for Thatcher and for Reagan, and it will be the end of monetarism. Tony Benn, as the host, hoped it would be a kind of family reunion for the left. But it was a family with immense strains as well as over a thousand Labour members who are many people from way outside the party, like Socialist Worker and interests like Workers' Power. It's a tendency within the Labour Party. To do what? Uh, to organise, to build revolutionary politics within the Labour Party and outside it. Well, I'm joined now by Peter Taft, General Secretary of the Socialist Party and founder of the Entries Militant Group, which caused Labour so many problems in the 1980s. Welcome to the programme. I hope Hi. you enjoyed seeing yourself there a few years back. I think back. that jumper is just superb, that Peruvian <laughs> jumper. Why didn't you show me at that age? Yes, I, you're right. We'll do that next time. <laughs> OK. Now, Paul Mason, back in 1987, you were part of a ginger group agitating ginger. for revolutionary... Well, a group, yes, yeah. agitating for revolutionary politics in Labour. But when George Osborne recently accused you of being a revolutionary Marxist, you denied it. Well, Why? I'm, well, because I'm not one now. Oh, um, but you were one. Yo, I mean, that's what that's what we, you know, it, the, Thatcher had destroyed the miners. We had extra extra judicial uh, force used against working class people. Uh, there were riots on the streets. Um, you know, we were we were fighting a battle for the survival of working class communities, which we lost. Uh, which I am terribly sorry about. There are people in, you know, Ebervale and Wigan, Lee, where I come from, still living with that, right. and we were right to fight it. So why aren't you still fighting it? Because the world that has emerged is, first of all, different. The world that has emerged, the global, global economy, the possibilities for social justice that have emerged have to be recalibrated against where you start from, number one. And, and for, for me, personally, the journey I've taken is that I think you know, the, the, the revolutionary left politics of the 1970s and 80s had this fatal weakness of n failing to understand that what most working class people and what ordinary people who work know, let's, let's leave aside the, the, the labels, want is, is an area of self-control within capitalism, within the system. That's what people like Nye Bevan fought for. That's what, uh, as a trade unionist as well as an MP, that's what I would fight for now. Are you disappointed by this change of heart? Paul Mason says he's just adapting to the world as it is today. You're stuck in the 1970s, no, I, 80s. I, no, I think he's changed his position and I think that's regret. <laughs> He's, as he's explained, because I think there's even more of a case today for the battles that we fought 30 years ago, and we won some of those battles. It wasn't all losses. Mm. We were the people that is militant now, the Socialist Party, who took on Thatcher in Liverpool and defeated her. She was forced to give big concessions to the working class of Liverpool. We were the people also who mobilised 18 million people to defeat the poll tax, and if you read... Mm. Mrs Thatcher's biography, you will see, she admits in there that that battle, Paul, led to her resignation. It wasn't the EU. Now, those lessons are relevant for today. What does Jeremy Corbyn's election to the leadership of the Labour Party represent? What does the Bernie Sanders phenomena in America represent, where he's talked about revolution? So They're an indication of the <laughs> massive... Opposition that's developing to this system. And yeah. You've, you've left, articulated that. You've left at the time when, when perhaps Britain and America are ripe for revolution. Well, look, Bernie Sanders' uh, talk of revolution is very clearly about a political revolution in America, yes. throwing money out of politics. And you yourselves have co thinkers inside. Uh, I think in Seattle, you've got yes. one, one city councillor. First time in yeah, 100 absolutely. years. Absolutely. And so, but you know, there is a big thing happening horizontally among young people. What we mean by that? Are not involved in hierarchical groups. There are people on the streets of Paris right now, every night, yes. fighting for social justice, what they're not fighting for is a Leninist revolution. Mm. That, the possibility of it is gone, number one. Number two, you know, yes, the struggle, we won things through fighting the poll tax. Your own collaborator, Tommy Sheridan, you know, was a, a, a heroic, I would argue. Yes. In what it, and, and the Scottish people followed... followed and we had 34 comrades yeah, jailed so, in that yeah, battle. Absolutely. And no, the point is, what do we do now? What do we do now, I think, has to be a mixture of 
resisting the austerity, resisting the injustices that have been inflicted on people, and parliamentary action. And you Where yourself, is that? You, you can't even you, look. Why don't you? The, you know, why don't you just come in? Join the Labour Party. Give yourselves, as we on did the, in 1997. As we did in 97, that was a Labour Party. Yes, activist I, would, I was part of the Labour so Party. Why don't you? But why don't well, you do we that? We would like to join the Labour Party. Right. I think you should. In, be in the same way but, as the Co-op. But do you still want a Leninist ah. Marxist yeah, revolution? Yes, in the same way as the Co-op. But I mean, Paul Mason says people don't want that. Paul, no, the, the, he's dragging in the idea of Leninism as a hierarchical. Uh, centralized but do you still believe in Leninism? We believe in parties, yes, because we don't believe that will be a spontaneous movement that can overthrow the most ruthless capitalist class that we've had in history. They are absolutely ruthless. They've been right. trained to rule. You know, what, what the, the phenomena that you've mentioned with Podemos and others, it's a step forward. Yeah. Right. The Corbyn movement is a step forward, but because it's a kind of anti-party like party. Because you'd like it to be the sort of party you want it to be, which is this overthrow of the capitalist class. Yes, but, but we believe that will be uh, arrived at by democratic discussion and debate. We would like to be part of the Labour Party. Paul wrote a very, a very interesting article in The Guardian in which he said it can't be now... Uh, that, you know, centralised. They can't be a top-down party. We agree with that. Right. Why not a federation Why of different you... organisations and different parties? Do you think there is still a swell of, of support for that sort of sentiment? There's, there's none among young people, and young people, in I other words, are way ahead of of the kind of fossilised. Uh, leftism of the 20th century. They have realised that you, you can you can have your own personal revolution. You can you can do quite a lot on your own. And the the key difference for me is that so many people have decided that you know instead of spending your entire life trying to force Labour to do things or force Unite or the RMT to do something, just do it yourself. We just are doing it on, ourselves. But the point is, when you do it yourself, you don't need but you've a had hierarchical. To Organisation and Paul, structure above. You just you, don't need. With, it, with a cell phone, you can do more than you can with a. Power. I think that's childish, frankly. I think that what you what you've uh, explained in your book on post capitalism is the enormous repressive apparatus that the ruling class worldwide has built built up. You gave a very good phrase, where you said, "Think about uh, Manila in Gothenburg." Yeah. You talked about the the head of Prudential Insurance saying. The minimum wage is the enemy of young people. They are ruthless. Do you think by just coming together in a, in a, in a, in a, in a kind of uh, a general discussion that we'll be able to overthrow this capitalist you, class? That's childish. You build a the only way by building build is building a, a mass party. Power to it is what I would say. You let, build let me, a social counterpart. Are you still close to Jeremy Corbyn? In the sense, yes, we support Corbyn. We would like to be part of his project. But Jeremy Corbyn is unfortunately he's trapped behind enemy lines. It's like the position... Who's the enemy? Who, I was going to the, say, who is well, the enemy? So, some of them are the Blairites, one of whom you've had in here today. They don't want what Jeremy Corbyn stands for. Paul knows this. We have two parties in one in the Labour Party. We have the Jeremy Corbyn Labour Party and we have the old discredited rem remnants Peter, of is, the Blairites. Is, we want a real struggle to build a party that represents the overwhelming majority. Well, just and that's briefly, not do you think Peter and his supporters are threatening the potential success of Jeremy Corbyn? Well, no, not so far, because they can't win a single election against him. But look, Labour is always an, an alliance of the left and right, and it's just Agreed. unusual that the left is leading it. Right. That's what the Blairites can't get their head around. But they they're a minority. And I'm going to have to finish it there. Peter, thank you very much for coming in.